Hello, Johnny here from the PE Tutor. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you today about was the respiratory system short-term responses to a single exercise session. Now these are sixfold. The first we have the chemical response or the chemical control of the respiratory system. Next we have the neural control, the neural responses to, to, uh, to a single exercise session. We then have the addition of new muscles in the mechanics of breathing, which then cause changes to occur in the tidal volume and minute ventilation. And finally, we have internal processes with changing, such as the oxygen dissociation curve. So we're going to start with chemical control. Uh, this is primarily linked to chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are in our body to detect changes that occur with chemicals or concentrations of gases or, or acids inside of our blood and muscles. For example, as soon as we start to exercise, CO2 begins to be released uh, through aerobic respiration. Oxygen levels begin to decrease because we're using those during aerobic respiration and we're also producing lactic acid. Combined, we're seeing well, a reduction in O2, increases in acidic compounds or molecules such as carbonic acid and lactic acid. And chemoreceptors are there or oh, they're on hand to detect these changes and then send those messages up to our brain so that we can then we can then actually respond and change our respiration so that we can counteract the, the changes which are going on because we don't want to be in an acidic environment. We want to have plenty of oxygen so that we can sustain energy demands uh, of, our, of our muscles. So that's chemical control. Uh, next, we have the, the neural control, the response of the, of the neurological pathways. And this takes place in our medulla oblongata, where we've got our respiratory control center. Now, within our respiratory control center, we have two more um, co compartments, we could call them. We have the expiratory control center and the inspiratory control center. And as soon as we begin to exercise, our inspiratory control center, it, it uses the sympathetic nervous system, which is the, the, the pathway that we use in our body to innovate or to, to, create, to create change and to, and to, to increase uh, levels of activity. So we use the SNS, or the sympathetic nervous system, to start engaging the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles at a greater rate with higher contractile force. And the, the impact of this is that we're lifting our rib cage up and outwards at a faster rate and, at, and of a greater, greater magnitude. So the, the drop in pressure is occurring far quicker and far more regularly. So as soon as this pressure drop is, is created by expanding that thoracic cavity, air is drawn in and we've got a fresh and a larger supply of oxygen which we can then diffuse into our body and transport around. So that's the, that's the ICC, the inspiratory control center. However, as soon as we start to do this and we expand our, our, lung, our lungs and thoracic cavity towards their limit, eventually it's going to reach its maximum. At this point, the stretch that's, that's experienced on the edge of the lungs um, is, is detected by baroreceptors. And this, this message is sent to our medulla oblongata, which now instructs the expiratory control center to begin contracting the abdominal muscles and the obliques and the, the internal intercostal muscles so that expiration shifts from a passive process to an active one. So we're now forcing expiration to occur at a far greater rate and of a far greater magnitude. Combined, so we've got this, the, this neurological response combined, we can now start to, to change tidal volume and minute ventilation. So tidal volume, the, the amount of, or the volume of air that we breathe in or out per breath, we begin to increase this because the, the, the skeletal muscle that's involved with the mechanics of breathing, such as the sternocleidomastoids or the pectoral minors, the scalenes, the abdominals or the obliques, we're starting to engage these far more, and that, that has the effect of increasing this thoracic cavity or the space inside of our rib cage to a greater, a greater volume, to a greater, to a greater space. And because of that, we can get more air in per breath. So our tidal volume starts to go up. But that's not the only change. We're actually contracting these muscles more frequently. So the, the impulses being sent by the RCC are starting to occur at a far greater rate. As a result, we're not only filling up to a greater, to a greater volume, but we're also exhaling and, in, and inhaling quicker. So the revolutions of breathing are starting to happen far quicker, one after the other, which has the effect of increasing our breathing rate. If we take breathing rate and tidal volume and we multiply those together, we arrive at the figure or the sum of minute ventilation, the quantity or the volume of air that we breathe in or out per minute. So if we're seeing an increase in tidal volume, 
and an increase in breathing rate, then of course we're going to see an increased minute ventilation, which is great for exercise because we're getting more oxygen in and supplying it to our working muscles, but we're also giving our body the opportunity to get rid of this buildup of CO2. So we're going to limit the, the amount of CO2 dissolving and, and forming carbonic acid, which drops the pH in blood and, and makes it difficult for muscles to contract it as effectively as they can. So that, that's five so far, chemical neural control, the skeletal muscles involved with breathing, and then the changes to tidal volume and minute ventilation. Our sixth response to a single exercise is the oxygen dissociation curve. Oxygen dissociation is it's when haemoglobin travels inside of the blood, uh, or oxyhemoglobin, because it's already picked up the oxygen from the lungs, it's traveling inside of the blood to the working muscle. When it passes a muscle which is in demand, or, or we have a diffusion gradient where there's a higher concentration of oxygen in the blood compared to the oxygen concentration in the muscle, if we have this diffusion gradient, oxygen is going to leave the haemoglobin and move into the muscle. What's waiting in the muscle is something called myoglobin. Now, myoglobin has a far greater affinity or attraction to oxygen compared to haemoglobin, so it's almost acting like a, like a magnet. It's drawing that oxygen in. But what we start to see when we exercise is because of increasing temperature, because of movement and, and the production of heat as a, as a byproduct, uh, and friction within the muscles and the joints, we start to see an increase in temperature of the blood and muscle. We also start to see an increase in acidity or pH begins to drop because we're producing lactic acid, because we're producing CO2, which is dissolving as carbonic acid. These two changes actually cause that, that rate of dissociation to occur at a far greater rate or magnitude. So let's just say we had a, a, a muscle of a certain oxygen concentration at rest and the same oxygen concentration at a muscle but during exercise. If we were to look at the curves or the amount of oxygen that's dissociating from haemoglobin at these two locations, more will leave the haemoglobin and enter the muscle when we're exercising compared when or compared to rest. And this is because of the increased temperature and the increased acidity. So that's the respiratory system's responses to one single exercise session. Six, we have the chemical changes, the neural changes, and the skeletal muscles in the mechanics of breathing. We then have changes to the tidal volume as a result of that, which leads to minute ventilation also increasing. And lastly, we have the oxygen dissociation, the increased quantity of oxygen which leaves haemoglobin and enters the muscle when we're exercising because of increased temperature and decreased acidity. If you found this useful, then feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel, or if you're watching this on our on our email courses, fantastic. If you're not already subscribed to our email courses, then click the link below and you can find out more information about the free courses that we're offering to students and teachers studying a range of courses um, in, well, to help them prepare for their exams. I hope to hear from or we'll see you very soon.